What's up, Starlink fans? I'm Hill Phantom, and I'm super amped today. Why am I amped? Because I got an email at 12.30 a.m. this morning from Starlink. Inside that email, they wanted my opinion via survey about what you ask about using it with my RV. Let's go. All right, at 12.25 a.m. today, September 9th, early in the morning, I got this email. This, this is mountain time, so 13 hours ago as of this recording. And I filled it out rather shortly after I got it. Are you interested in using Starlink with an RV? Yes, I am. Hit OK. Number two, what type of RV do you typically use? This has all the different types of RVs. I'm in a travel trailer, so I'll select that. How many days a year do you use your RV? Under 30, all the way to I live full time in the RV, other choices, 30 to 90 is the range that I'm in. Would you use Starlink at home while not traveling in the RV? Yes. If you haven't seen my mount video, I did mount it on the roof, but I did it in a way that I could be able to take that down. Now with the new Dishy version two, and I'm getting ready to update you on that on my next video coming out this week, so be sure to watch that but it's going to be smaller. So I don't know whether I'll end up having two, one that I can leave on my camper or carry around hopefully and leave the other one on my roof. But the fail safe method, if you want to see what I did was just to do it temporarily on the roof so that you can take it down if needed. So I'm going to say, yes, I'll be using it both at home and while on the road using my RV. Next question. How many different locations do you typically go to every year? Five plus for me. What does your RV travel typically look like? Where do you go? How long do you stay in each place? For me, it's all over the country and I stay three days to two months. When using your RV, how many hours a week on average do you or someone in your group spend driving? I'm going to go eight to 16 on an average. When you travel, where do you usually set up your RV? Now it asks whether you stay in an RV park or campground or you boondock or you do a mix. And for me, it's a mix. Does your RV have a generator built in? Bought one, no or other, uh, I bought my generator. What type of internet connectivity solution do you use today? Cellular, satellite, public, none. So I use cellular via a uh, hotspot and Verizon, which again, connects in some places, but not the places I need it. How many gigabytes of data would you use each month with the RV connectivity? For me, it bounces all over. It really depends on what I'm doing and how heavy my workload is and virtual stuff. And if I want to do a, you know, have a, have a game session, uh, you know, I'm pretty up there, but I don't think I'm 50 plus on average, but I'm going to say 50 plus and I encourage you all to, if you get the survey only so they don't try to cap us. So I'm going to say 50 plus gigabytes. How much do you pay per month for your current RV connection? I pay $50 a month for unlimited data, although it's throttled after 20 through Verizon. How many passengers in addition to yourself typically travel? It's just typically me and my wife. When in transit, how do your passengers in your RV slash you typically use the internet? Well, when I'm driving, obviously I don't use it, but I do use it for mapping. But folks in the car at any given time, especially with my wife, she could be doing any of these things. When at a fixed location, how do you use your household, use your current RV? Well, again, this is everything. When I'm not driving, I'm going to be doing everything you can on the internet. Number 16, if Starlink were available for your RV today, how would that impact your RV experience? Well, for me, I'm just going to leave it at this for safety. I can expand here and I did. Now, this is in my original survey. This is just placeholders. But for me, we've talked a lot about this on the channel. I go to a lot of remote places. Um, I do a lot of remote events in the mountains. Uh, I do a lot of backcountry skiing where there is no connectivity other than spot satellites. And that's only goes so far and really just there for SOS. And it's really expensive for what it is. So for me, this has a lot to do with safety as well as fun, as well as work. So I would say, you know, safety and work are the two big things for me. Number 17, what do you think would be the most challenging part of using Starlink with your RV? Uh, for me, it's just mounting on an RV. Uh, the only other issue is probably getting a clear view of a north sky. Uh, so, so positioning might be an issue. Number 18, do you have any other thoughts regarding Starlink and RVs? I have many here and I submitted it to them in a different format than this. But I just put this here because I'm going to tell you at the end. After walking you through the survey, it's very clear to me and should be to you that they're taking using Starlink and RVs and mobility in general very seriously. 
When I joined the beta, I wanted to take this out into the backcountry, in places that do not have any service. This was the perfect solution. But I found out very early on after I emailed them that this was geolocked, officially from support. They said to me it was geolocked. However, you can find a lot of things on YouTube that say that it's not, and you can go certain places. You know, technically, you're covered by two or three cells, they call them. And basically what that means is you can be inside of your bubble uh, or your cone of influence and still get service. They can't pinpoint you exactly. I mean, they could, but they're not. And if you go outside of that, in my opinion, it will not work. Further, because they emailed me back, I would worry that you're violating the terms of service. They said to me that, yes, they understand. We want to go on the road with this thing. We want to put it on our RVs, but we'd have to wait. This survey is just in response to many people like me and to what Alon said a couple months ago in a tweet. After the filing of the new DISHI with the FCC, he mentioned that it will be smaller and more mobile, and he intends to put it on things like cars, ships, planes, and oh yes, RVs. As I mentioned that FCC filing that we covered with the new DISHI marries very nicely with the survey and an overall movement to push this into the hands of RV owners. RV owners know broadband has always been a struggle, either really expensive or really spotty. Starlink, if we get it in the form of this smaller, lighter dishy that we can either place out or put on top of our rigs, it will change the game. Just another example how Starlink really is being disruptive and intends to listen to its customers. Well, I'm Hill Phantom. I hope you will like and subscribe to my channel. We'd love to have you. And until next time, reminding you, Always send it.